welcome back to Forest Education, this is Zed. Today, we're going to be talking about OCGN once more. In this video, we do have new due diligence, new news, technical analysis, and what we can anticipate in the next few days or so. So without further ado, let's jump right into this one. So OCGN. If you haven't heard about this, there's mixed reviews on some other seed as the next big thing, but basically they are a pharmaceutical company and one of their biggest things including Covaxin. Covaxin is a whole viral inactivated vaccine for COVID-19 and there's a lot of news about this one recently. So if you haven't heard, watched my videos before, you might be a little bit fuzzy about how Covaxin actually works. So OCGN didn't actually develop Covaxin. It's actually developed by Baharat Biotech in India. And these clinical trials such as adult phase three and the PEDS phase two third, uh, that is actually sponsored by Baharat Biotech. And the idea behind this is if and when it gets approved in North America, they actually applied both in Canada and in, North, and in uh, the US, but not Mexico yet, at least I don't think so. But once it gets approved, then they're able to sell Covaxin in Canada and in the US and 50% of the net profits goes to Covaxin, or sorry, goes to OCGN. So they do have other as well products that they're developing. A uh, bunch of them are preclinical or IND enabling, including modifier gene therapy platform and novel biologic. Now, in terms of Covaxin, they received new news coming out of this one, uh, mainly towards the World Health Organization. I'll talk to that about that in a second. But here, this presentation came out actually yesterday. And so some of the things they mentioned they've done recently is published a phase three clinical trial suggesting demonstration of efficacy against COVID-19 and variants of concern of interest. They also have a manufacturing partner selected. Tech transfer from Baharat Biotech is in progress, targeting 100 million doses per year. Now the IND filed with FDA for phase 3 bridging study and assessing potential EUA pathway for pediatric use in the US and Health Canada regulatory processes are ingoing with deficiencies noted and response being prepared. And initially yesterday it was under review but the World Health Organization things approved I'll go with that in a second. So the product profile itself, so it's a whole variant inactivated SARS-CoV-2 antigen concentration and adjuvant 6UG or microgram uh, plus algal IMDG. So the idea, it's an inactivated whole virin COVID-19 or sorry, SARS-CoV-2 virus. So it tells you here about the doses. There's around 10 doses per vial. You're able to store it for around two years between two and eight degrees Celsius and three months at room temperature. Now, why Covaxin? So it's designed for broad spectrum for immune response and the data suggests both humoral and cellular response generated against multiple viral proteins and the data support that the vaccine induces a Th1 response, which is a cell mediated immunity, which can be vital for durable protection. Number two, results against overall severe and Delta variant, uh, variants only vaccine with phase 3 clinical trial data suggests broad protection against variants of concern and known safety profile so phase 3 adverse events profile similar to that placebo and technology platform used to produce polio influenza and rabies vaccines so that's the same one so basically it's a known technology transportation and storage so 10 dose are vial can be stored between 2 and 8 degrees celsius with a two-year shelf life again and three months stability at room temperature so research suggests that covaxin elicts strong igg response against spike protein receptors binding domain and nucleoplasid protein of sars cov 2 along with strong cellular response the current mrna and adenovirus based vaccines only elicit response against spike protein proteins so that's the big difference so the overall efficacy is around 77.8 percent efficacy versus severe disease it protects against severe diseases with 93.4 percent and against the delta it's 65.2 percent so these are some of the numbers here and you have participants recruited between 20 november 2020 and january 2021 across 25 sites is around 25,800 participants now we have some more details about the role of adjuvant in Covaxin itself and a bit more breakdown and some data uh, that might be useful if you're more interested in it, you can pause or just take a look into the presentation itself. 
Now, another thing here is uh, the protection against variants. So 90% of infections by variants here were caused in this trial. Around 59% was actually hit by Delta, 5% Alpha, 13% Kappa, 16% Other, and 7% the genome was not received. And let's move on a little bit to the latest news to understand this a little bit better. But this presentation mainly focused at least half of it into Covaxin and the rest is modifier gene therapy platform. Now, the latest news was actually the World Health Organization emergency use that was approved for Covaxin. What does that mean? So the idea for this one, it means that it, it is recognized globally by the World Health Organizations and a lot of countries recognize that in travel for COVID or temporary at least uh, vaccine certificates for traveling around. If it's required, then Bahara Biotech becomes in uh, one of these vaccines that are at least trusted to travel internationally, depending on the countries and the laws that they have there. Now, quick thing here is that they're saying using a traditional advanced stage whole variant inactivated virus uh, or vaccine development approach uh, that includes immune system to target the whole virus and broad antibiotic antibody. Covaxin is basically uh, different than the current vaccine vaccines and this is kind of a big thing we're excited at the prospect of bringing covaxin to the u.s and canada and have submitted the u.s fda and health canada uh, requirements and i'll talk about the applications and what i see happening in a bit but there is a conference on november 9th at 8 30 a.m eastern standard time to discuss the third quarter 2021 financial results and provide business updates now, a quick thing before moving on, if you would like to see more contents like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button and leave your notifications on. Don't forget to drop a like to this video if you've actually enjoyed this video so far, and you can join our Discord totally free in the description below. Now, short interest seems to be a bit high. It's around 30% that's reported both on E-Trade and on Finviz. So that's still quite a good amount of them. On the short interest ratio, there's around 0.73 days uh, to cover and around half of every single day as uh, volume is going towards the short volume side. Although the short borrow fee rate is actually small, it's only a 2.38. So you're able to see that why the short selling has been a little bit tense because the short borrow fee rate is small and there's not that urgency to cover. Now, of course, if the stock price jumps, that is the definition of a short squeeze where people are actually trying to buy back and the selling pressure decreases a lot. And that is kind of a definition of a short squeeze. Now, another thing I do want to talk about is institutional buyers. We're able to see a bit mixed. For instance, Cambridge Investments Research added around 16,621 shares. Victory Capital Management increased their position by half. Uh, New York State Common Retirement Fund liquidated by 24%. SG American Securities added 70,000 shares. That's only in the last three days. Insiders, there's nothing much going on. Around 0.3% off the float was sold by the insiders. That's mainly on how they usually get paid, uh, rewarded, that kind of things. It's nothing major. Now, one thing I do want to talk about and I'll talk about at the end is how the Covaxin is most likely going to play in North America because really that's all that matters because OCGN takes the profits out of North America. Uh, mainly right now it's in Canada and the US where the application is submitted and not the entire world. We'll talk about that at the end after technical analysis. Now for technical analysis, we're seeing a bunch of good things here. For instance, the moving averages, they're really looking good. You got your 10 SMA being above the 30 EMA and a 50 SMA being above the 200 SMA. Really bullish. Below the price itself, between 1097 and 959, there's something called a trading action zone. That's where most positive reversals occur, and it's basically a cushion underneath it. And you're able to see it does bounce back when it goes inside this trading action zone. Now, on the ADX, it's at 5546 at this level. You can expect pullbacks as you've seen today. And the William percent R, which is very similar to relative strength index, shows high selling activities today compared to the day before, bringing this one from overbought on the day before to neutral, closer to oversold. Now, MACD has dipped in the histogram, suggesting that momentum is a little bit slowing down. The buying action is a bit slowing down. A lot of people are doing the 
by the rumor sell the news but the fact is that this wasn't the big news that a lot of people should be looking for the big news should be their approval in the us and canada and not just the world health organization i mean it's a part of the formula but you're seeing by the rumor sell the news and i guess after this uh the very easily the key uh, aspect and milestone is the us and canada approval but once people recognize that you might see more buying activity happening now, on the stochastic fast and stochastic slow, both are telling you it's very likely it's dipping down to the next support, and we're going to examine that in a second. But the moving averages in the Bollinger Bands are increasing upwards, and volumes have picked up really nicely. The Bollinger Bands are between 1409 and 529, so it's a large gap, but they're pinpointing upwards, and that's what matters. Now, the next thing I do want to cover is Fibonacci retracements because uh, high interest sellers and institutional buyers do trade onto this one. So first off at 1877 all the way down we're going to go only to the 140 and we're able to see that there are some significant supports and resistances. First support is at 1213, 1009, 804, 550. Resistances are at the 1505 and 1877. Now from a price line action we're able to see a critical support at the 1287. Below there, 1230. Below there, 1188. It dips down just a bit to 1087. And then a bit more to 961. Goes down to 865. And then 795. Going down to 713. And then 626 and 534. Resistances. We're able to see a resistance hitting at 1334. 1402. 1570. 1629. In around 1770 comes to the question, Ed, what do you think is going to happen here? Well, first off, a lot of people are forgetting the US and Canada approval. And just because it got the World Health Organization approval doesn't mean it will get the US and Canada approval. So that's a whole big milestone on its own. And it could take months, it could take weeks, it could take days, it could take hours. So it really is a variable thing and subjective to look at. Now, the idea of Covaxin and how it's going to benefit. Well, if you were just to go on from the surface, you can easily see Canada has more than 80% of the people in there vaccinated. Pfizer and Moderna uh, has a lot of acceptance. There's around, let's say, 15% of people that are still hesitant about vaccines. And in America or in the US, my bad, um, there is around, let's say, 45% of people that are not vaccinated or hasn't really taken at least one dose yet. Um, basically on Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson, or Moderna. And the idea behind it is more political from my point of view, rather than coming in as uh, basically them waiting for a new vaccine, especially Indian manufactured vaccine. Um, it's more related as well on things that are more political that I can't really explain, otherwise I'd probably lose my channel. Um, anyway, so going in towards the aspects of that, this vaccine could perhaps be used as boosters, if you think about it. And the technology behind it could be, for instance, if it's covering under variants, later on down the roads, it could be used as boosters in the US and Canada, and that's where the revenue would mainly come, rather than initially from the first doses. What do you think is going to happen here? Make sure to down in the comments below. Share, subscribe, and like, and have a wonderful day. Now, if you're still here on this video, make sure to drop down below and join our Discord. We have a lot of different things going on, including, for instance, members that gives picks for free. It's not pump and dumps. We just things we think about, swings, etc. We also have really exciting bots. Uh, you can actually use those ones. For instance, we we're just testing out this bot, for instance, that gives you Fibonacci resistance points, activities, etc. And we have a bunch of free things, totally free. We run on tips here, and you can ask me questions, suggest stocks, etc. It's a really nice community that has been growing up uh, very fast at a very good rate and it's totally free if you would like to join that one feel free to do so in the description below and have a wonderful day